Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm taking a look at the latest update which includes Clone and Stamp, a tool that we've been wanting for a long time. It's finally here, I'm gonna walk through in this video how it works and also give you five key tips that will allow you to get the most out of it. Now this update, if you are in Luminar Neo, is a free update if you already own Luminar Neo and if you don't own it, there's a link down below where you can purchase it. And in fact, you can use my coupon code GYMNEXTNEO to save a few dollars. That info is down below. Um, free update though, if you already own it, just click on Luminar Neo and click on check for updates. What I wanna do here, of course, is jump into this tool. It's down in the professional section on the right-hand side, the very bottom, click on clone, and you have three options here, size, softness, and strength. Those are all about your brush settings. How big is it? How soft is the edge? Is it an abrupt transition or a smooth one? Softness at 100 is a smooth transition, and I leave it there. And strength is how much of that effect is being applied. I leave that at 100 as well. Now, there's five key things to think about when you're using clone and stamp, and I'm gonna walk into those, but the first thing I wanna do is talk about the difference between erase, which we already have, and clone and stamp, which we just got. Erase, which we've had since the beginning of Luminar Neo, is basically you mouse over something and you tell Luminar Neo, hey, figure it out. You go figure out what should go there because I wanna erase whatever it is I'm mousing over. You're, you're putting the control, for lack of a better word, and the decisions on Luminar Neo. Clone and stamp is the opposite. You're taking control and you're telling Luminar Neo what pixels, for lack of a better word, to paste over whatever pixels you're trying to cover up or get rid of. And so that's the difference. Erase is Luminar figures it out. Clone and stamp is you're in charge and you're figuring it out. So now the first thing to think about, I've got a photo here and there's some stuff over here that I don't really wanna have here. The first thing to think about is check your background because what you're doing, of course, is you're telling Luminar, paste this stuff on top of that stuff. So you wanna make sure whatever you're pasting makes sense where you're pasting it. So step one or uh, tip number one is pay attention to your background. The second tip is to zoom in simply because when I'm zoomed out like that, it's hard to see how accurate it is. So I'm not gonna zoom in all the way. I'm gonna to go to maybe 50 or so, but you should be able to get good visibility here. But I recommend zooming in. And the third tip is to go slow simply because if you're in a hurry, you tend to mess things up, right? Or at least I do, seems kind of normal uh, or human, if you will, but uh, take it easy, you know, don't be in a hurry. Now, how does it work? You can see once you activate the tool, there's a little uh, menu or a little thing over here that says click to set the source. This is your source pixels. This is what you're cloning or copying versus what you're uh, stamping or pasting, right? So it's kind of like copy and paste, for lack of a better word. So what I'll do is, let's say I want to cover up this sign. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click those pixels. And as soon as I do that, uh, my mouse shows up. I'm going to shrink my mouse. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to start moving some small strokes to cover up that sign with the trees on the right-hand side. So you can see this left-hand uh, little circle. That's the one I'm pasting with. And the one on the right-hand side that kind of has the bullseye target kind of look, that is your source. So that's what I'm cloning from. And just a moment ago, I mentioned tip number four, which is small strokes. I recommend all these things like checking your background, zooming in, going slow, and using small strokes simply because it's gonna give you more accurate results. So as I keep doing this, you can see that I'm kind of covering up that sign with the stuff that's over there on the right-hand side. I'm gonna keep doing that just so I can get this sign fully covered up, and I think that looks pretty good. That sign is effectively gone. I think that looks fantastic, to be honest. Now, while I'm at it, I'm gonna do another thing, and this is tip number five, and this is something I recommend doing quite a bit, and that is change your source point. Don't always use the same source. That's gonna give you a better, more varied pattern, which I think personally blends into the image more eloquently, let's say. And so in order to change your source point, all you do, at least on a Mac, it may be different on Windows, I apologize, I don't know, but on a Mac, you hit the Option key and you can see it goes back to this regular target. So as I'm holding down the Option key, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click let's say right there, and that's my new source. And note that as I move to brush, I brush side to side a lot as well as up and down. But as I move to brush, you'll notice that my source is moving as well. 
which is why I recommend changing your source because you want to vary that pattern and you don't want it to grab things as a source that you don't want it to grab. So I come in frequently and I'll click option again and then I'll come in here and I will paint again. And I just keep doing this, keep clicking option and going over things that I just don't want to have in the uh, in the photo, right? So I'm coming in here doing this and you can see I'm getting a pretty good result. Okay, and now you can see I've cloned and stamped this entire area over here. So I got rid of the car, a couple of signs, lots of different things like that. And it really just comes down to this slow, the zoomed in, checking the background, making small strokes, and of course, resetting your source point quite often. But the result here is not something I could get with the erase tool simply because it doesn't know exactly what I want to replace it with and it makes its own decisions, whereas clone and stamp puts me in control. So if I show you the before, you can see there's a a wire or like some kind of power line up in the trees there kind of connecting to the chimney of that little place and all those signs are there as well as that car and now I've removed all that and I think that looks a whole lot better so that's really how it works and how you can get the most out of it by using those five tips hope that gives you some idea my friends about how to uh, really maximize your use of clone and stamp it's a great addition to Luminar Neo I need to go clone and stamp some more things I see some more signs I see some signs on the bridge things like that I need to go wrap this up that's how it works. Wanted to walk through it. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon with more Luminar Neo videos. Talk to you then. You guys take care. And until then, adios.